Somebody asked me today how to create a circular progress indicator in Flinto for Mac. And I've got an idea how to do this. I'm going to go through my whole process so you can see how I think through the problem. And I'm here in Sketch, and I want to start out by creating this kind of a circle shape. And let's cut that in half. So my idea is to start with a half circle. I'm cut that out, flatten this path. And that's the shape I'm going to start with. So I'll give this a nice red color. And I'm going to import this into Flinto for Mac. So I'll run the Send to Flinto Sketch plugin. Now the first thing I want to do is set this up so that it rotates around this point. Right now if I rotate, it's spinning around the center of this shape. And because this is going to represent a full circle, I want it to actually rotate around this point. And I can make that change by adjusting the origin. So in Flinto, there's a origin property in the inspector. And this represents, you know, this value here means uh, you're halfway between. So this is x. And in the x direction, 0 0.5 means I'm in the middle. 1 is here. And 0 is here. So you can think of it like a percent. And 0 0.5 is 50%. So I want to go 100% across so that the origin is right here. So I'll type in 1. And now when I rotate, it goes around that point. So that's perfect. You can see how this will spin around like a circle. And because I want this, um, this, this progress bar to start, you know, start, start out of nowhere, I want there to be nothing on the screen and then the progress bar starts to appear. So my idea is to put this in a group and turn on clipping on that group. And I'll call this group left. And so I've turned on clip which masks the content. And right now, the area that shows through in this mask is the shape of the layer. So everything is showing through. But if I slide this over, uh, let me just check the width here. So this is 238. So I'm going to double that. So I'll type 238 times 2 into the width field. And then I'll drag this over. All right, so now I've got the exact same shape, but I've shifted it over. And the, uh, the actual layer is hanging off to the left, and it's invisible. If I deselect this, you can't see it at all. If I select this area, this is the visible portion of the mask, which is empty, and the shape is over on the left. Now, if I go and select that shape and start to spin it, you can get an idea how it's going to come into view and do the animation that I'm after. So I've got my left one. What I'm going to do is duplicate that. And I'm going to flip this over the, to the other side. And I'll call this one right. And I want to move that shape. Uh, you know, I want to flip that over to the other side as well. So I'm just going to rotate it around. So now I've got the, the mirrored setup here. So I've got one on the right, one on the left. And they both have their, their mask, the visible portion of the mask, you know, over to the side of the shape. All right, so I'm going to select both of those, create a group around both of them. I'll call the group uh, progress, and I'm going to create a behavior for this. So in the behavior designer, I've got my initial state, which is blank. That's just how I want it. I'll create a new state called complete, and I'll take the, uh, the left shape here, and I'm going to rotate it around. And you can see in the, um, in the thumbnail up there, how, almost how it's going to look when it animates. So I'm going to rotate that all the way around like that so it comes into view. And I'm going to use classic easing for this because I want it to be a linear easing. And I'll make it go over one second, so a thousand milliseconds. And I can toggle back and forth now and see the animation. Cool, but that's only half the animation. So I've got the other one that's on the right side. And I'm going to rotate that one around to make a complete circle. Also a thousand millisecond duration, but this is going to have also a thousand milliseconds delay. So it's going to wait a thousand milliseconds while the first one's playing. And then once that's finished, the second one will start playing because it's going to wait for that thousand millisecond delay. So let's see how this looks from the initial state. So that's in reverse and then forward. Cool. Now, when I load this screen, it's just going to sit on the initial state. What I'm going to do is use a timer link. So I'll click timer link in the inspector, and I'll, I'll use uh, 
Well, 800 milliseconds is fine. There'll just be a brief delay before it starts. Target will be complete. And I'll open up the preview so we can see this. Okay, so 800 milliseconds goes by, then it starts, and it plays the animation just like I wanted. And in order to reset this, uh, I think what I'll do is just um, have another timer link from complete back to initial. And this is the shortcut for making a timer link. You can right click drag from one of the states and I'll do a thousand milliseconds. So after one second, it's going to reset. It's going to go back to the initial state, but I don't actually want to see the animation in reverse. I just want to skip the animation. So I'll click the skip animation option just because I'm resetting it. Okay. Open up the preview again. Cool. So now it's just playing over and over again. So I can just see the preview of this, but the way you use this in an actual prototype could vary. You probably want this to appear when a screen appears and then maybe this would go and it would probably just stop there and not, you know, not circle around again. Um, perhaps you'd want to show like a check mark in the middle or something like that, but, uh, kind of a tricky effect to create, uh, requires a little bit of creative thinking to make that work. But I think this is a pretty good solution. There's probably other ways to do it. If you have any cool ways of doing it, you should post it into our Facebook group or share it on Twitter. We'd like to see it.